Welcome back people and yes I have my Arsenal shirt on because today we are going to be rebuilding Arsenal but more so tactically they have signed a couple players already Fabio Vieira and Gabriel Jesus we're going to be adding one or two more and we're going to be creating that perfect tactic for Arsenal we're also going to be using well I use the Athletic they have an article out about how Arsenal can improve tactically especially attacking those central areas now with Gabriel Jesus this video is also sponsored by Manscaped in in case you didn't know and also if you are enjoying my type of content make sure you are subscribed like the video leave a comment in the comment section and all of that good stuff but for now let's get stuck in So here we're on the Athletic website, they have an article if I just scroll up to the top, how Gabriel Jesus can unlock Arsenal's attack after Alexandre Lacazette's loneliness. And what we have here is Arsenal's season pass network in their most common formation in the Premier League last season. While on paper the most common formation Arsenal used last season was a 4-2-3-1, the average pass network across all games in the starting formation was slightly different and represents both how they were hampered by an isolated Alexandre Lacazette and how the new number nine Gabriel Yazud should provide greater synergy to Arsenal's attack in 2022-23. The back four took up recognisable positions with the full backs more advanced than the centre backs. The double pivot in midfield was slightly tilted with the left side as Shaka across the halfway line more often than Thomas Partey on the right hand side. The wingers and striker also took up standard positions but the biggest trend that affected Arsenal's 4-2-3-1 shape was Erdogan's positioning as a number 10. Rather than playing in the pocket behind the striker, he constantly drifted into the right half space, often dropping in to receive off Tomiyasu, the right back. The Norwegian tended to combine with Saka on the right wing, either finding him isolated to burst into the final third or trading passes before creating a chance himself. That trend meant that Saka and Erdegaard ranked third and fifth in the Premier League last season for shot creating actions. The biggest area for improvement is staring everybody in the face and that's the little red dot at the top of the centre circle with no passing connections which represents Lacazette so if we scroll back up to the passing network we can see this little red dot which is of course Alexander Lacazette and as we can see he is fairly isolated. New signing Jesus should represent a substantial upgrade in this regard with his ability to travel well with the ball as well as being sharp enough to link up with those around him. Lacazette's circle which displays his pass count being smaller than Ramsdale's shows just how much of a hindrance this was for Arsenal last season. Jesus being more present in the opposition half should also ease pressure on attacking through the wide areas. Last season, without a platform to play off centrally, Arsenal had to focus attacks down the wings before moving infield to create. Now, they should be more capable of playing through the middle of the pitch when needed. If the view is to make Arsenal more balanced in the 22-23 season and mirror what was done right on the right-hand side last season, then their interest in the player with the profile of Lissandro Martinez who can play as a left-sided centre-back or a left-back and is also comfortable passing from deep is understandable. Beyond that, developments to their shape and who fulfills which roles will be where Arsenal can involve further. Arteta not using a strict 4-2-3-1 system became most apparent in the spring when Shaka was used more as a left-sided number eight in a midfield three, consistent of himself, Partey as the central anchor and Erdegaard more advanced on the right. Admitting that using Shaka in that more advanced role was not a decision made out of comfort was interesting, especially for a manager who is very often cagey. With a left-sided number eight, one of Arsenal's transfer target areas this summer, long-term interest in Yuri Tillersman, who is more comfortable in playing in tight spaces and higher pockets than Shaka, then becomes logical as a player with a profile of the Leicester City man would be better suited to fulfill that role than Shaka. Arsenal built a clear passing network over the course of last season where they needed to improve within that was even clearer than the network itself. Now that wraps us talking about how Arsenal can improve next season. What we're going to do now is go into Football Manager, have a look at the two signings that I made, but also we are going to be looking at the tactic that I have created and we're also going to be checking out the season results. So let's go into Football Manager. Whoa, before we start talking about 
kicking some balls let's talking about shaving some <laughs> this video is sponsored by manscaped the best in men's below the waist grooming their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels and now you have the chance to be one of over 5 million men worldwide who trust manscaped with this exclusive offer 20 percent off using my code rdf at manscaped yes you heard right at manscaped you get 20 percent off with this code rdf and it's not just the 20 percent off that you're getting it's also the worldwide free shipping that's about 10 million bulls <laughs> so as you can see my performance package 4.0 has arrived we have the weed whacker we have the lawn mower crop reviver and we also have the ball deodorant making sure that your family jewels is smelling all well correct you also get a travel bag but also get some very very handy boxes we can have a look at the lawnmower 4.0 now this is personally personally my favorite tool here other than the boxes i mean the boxes is fantastic but we also have this lawnmower 4.0 now my experience with this very smooth very very smooth admittedly i wasn't down with the male grooming but then trying this out i mean i don't think i've stopped nearly every shower the thing grows back i do use this lawnmower 4.0 it's fairly smooth now i was scared it's going to get caught on something which doesn't it's also it is also waterproof as well so when you're in the shower you have no issues this lawnmower 4.0 is needed but it's also this whole whole package here is also a very very good gift for a family member possibly a father-in-law <laughs> and just in case you missed it as well it also has a 400k led torch so again if you're showering in the dark or anything you have no worries so the lawnmower is possibly my favorite tool in this package but not far behind really not far behind we do have the weed whacker now this is for your ears and of course your nose as well so we'll just try it out now look at that no pain nothing just extra smooth Oh, this is fantastic. We might have to do this every video, guys. The Weed Whacker is also waterproof, like said, but it also has skincare technology. Now, this helps produce nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate nose holes. <laughs> Their Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver will certainly change the way you do your hygiene routine. And trust me when I say your your things down there your balls they will certainly thank you possibly give you a handshake manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their performance package 4.0 the manscaped boxes and the shed travel bag bring your comfort and boxes to another level it's time to take care of yourself so go to manscaped.com and get 20 percent off i'm also free worldwide shipping with my code rdf so that's it get 20 percent off and free shipping using my code rdf at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use rdf as the discount code unlock your confidence and always use the right tools at manscaped but also this will help out this channel of course let's get back into football manager so for the players that i have bought in we have bought in lucas Paqueta from leon someone that is rumored to join arsenal in real life he could be that left-sided number eight in replace of shaka as well someone that can shoot from distance he plays his shots likes to love the keeper he tries tricks and if you see Paqueta in real life you know he has a bit of flair to him so that is one of the two signings that we made but we also signed kyle walker peters a very very versatile fullback now we were looking at lissandra martinez and of course kyle walker peters isn't the exact same profile as walker peters doesn't play center back whatsoever but he is fairly confident on the ball as we can see with this pizza chart right now Now looking at the players that we got rid of, Ronison, Rhys Nelson, Hector Bellerin, Lucas Torreira, Ainsley maitland now Now there should be one or two as well, Ben, Leno and Pablo Mari. But of course, I struggled to get them out. I think I got them out in the end, but at the start of the season, it was a bit of a struggle. And here we can see our 4-2-3-1 with the preferred team all selected as well. In goal, we do have Ramsdale at left back, Kirantini, our back two, Gabriel and 
almost a Gabriel White. Gabriel and Benjamin White, Tomiyasu as the right back. Partey as one of the two in midfield. He's partnered with Lucas Paqueta. Erdegaard as the attacking midfielder, but slightly on the right hand side. Our two wingers, Saka Martinelli, lastly up top, the new signing, Gabriel Jesus. So, even though it can be a big, big window or summer for Arsenal, there's only two players in the new starting eleven, which is Gabriel Jesus and Lucas Paqueta. Now, on the bench, you can see that we have a lot of backups and now the team looks fairly, fairly decent. Kieran Tierney, if he gets injured, we've got Carl Walker-Peters, Cedric and Nuno Tavares. Walker-Peters, now this is one of the key things and one of the best things about him is that he can play left back and right back, but equally as good. It's not just the fact that he can play left back, but he's actually fairly good at left back. Too. So if Tini gets injured, we have Kyle Walker Peters. Tommy Asu is the same. If he gets injured, we have what we have Walker Peters or we have Cedric and at left back we also have Nuno Tavares still at the back we have Gabriel and White but Holden Saliba and Pablo Mari but we are looking to sell possibly Arsenal could buy another centre back in midfield we have Partey but El Nene Lokonga can come in for Paqueta Shaka can come in Lokonga as well Fabio Vieira as well even if we want to push it on the flanks we've got Martinelli but also Smith Rowe Fabio Vieira and Pepe and in attacking midfield we've got Smith Rowe and Fabio Vieira lastly up top Gabriel Jesus and Eddie Inketia. so there is a very very good squad here tactically for the tactic instructions because I've already done all of that the mentality is set to positive so we are a possession based side looking to keep hold of the ball be a little bit more patient in possession attacking width it is set to wide so we are looking to stretch the play and get the ball into those wider areas for the approach play focus play down the right something that we spoke on in the article and something that Arsenal of course do in real life we are going to be playing out from the back the passing directness and tempo now necessarily i wouldn't change this i wouldn't the passing directness i did try and change this to shorter but the performance it dropped massively it was very noticeable for the tempo i did like slightly higher because i got nice possession numbers though you can up this if you want better results and don't really care about the performance in the final third we are going to be sending in low crosses and working the ball into the box in transition now this is very very important when possession has been won we are going to counter press try and win the ball back as soon as possible but when possession has been won majority of the time you will be countering but against the top six or sometimes away from home if you feel you can be exposed then using no instruction really really helps against the biggest size because i played against the big teams and kind of simmed against all the other teams against the big teams i did use this without any instructions when the goalkeeper is in possession he is going to look to distribute the ball to the center backs and roll it out in real life ramsdale look for gabriel but in football manager we're going to switch it up and ramsdale can look for white or gabriel lastly for out of possession the higher line of engagement but with a standard defensive line the defensive width is set to standard do not change this especially to narrow because defensively things fall apart for some odd reason the trigger press for the first 10 or 15 games it actually started in the middle with slightly more often but the performances started to drop so then i knocked this back up by one and the performance then picked up so overall universally i think that more often works better but it doesn't mean that you can't use slightly more often especially if your players are starting to get tired this still works you can prevent your short goalkeeper distribution or that is what i'm doing but also getting stuck in so that there is the team instructions now for the player instructions in goal the goalkeeper doesn't have any for the left back he's a wing back on support taking more risk and marking tighter our two central defenders are ball playing defenders they're going to be dribbling more staying wider and marking tighter the right back is Tommy Yasu he's going to be crossing less often getting further forward and marking tighter he's a full back on support in midfield thomas Partey. he's that central midfielder on defender anchor man he's going to be closing down more tackling harder and marking tighter whilst his midfield partner the left-sided number eight lucas Paqueta, he's a mazala on support taking more risk now moving into the attack line martinelli the left winger the inverted winger on attack he's going to be tackling harder and marking tighter saka the inside forward he's going to be tackling harder and marking tighter martin erdegaard is an advanced playmaker on support he's going to be roaming from his position lastly gabriel jesus almost called him something different there <laughs> gabriel jesus as the pressing forward he's going to be taking more risk and dribbling more often with the ball and that there wraps up arsenal tactically this is how i have rebuilt arsenal how they can improve in my opinion next season and yeah take a good look 
and possibly use it if we want in your saves so this is it now we can move over to the results part of this video and see how well arsenal did over the season So now looking at the results, in the Premier League, Arsenal came second because Manchester City stole the Premier League title. We were at 92 points, Manchester City on 93. We only lost two games throughout the whole season. Those two games were against Liverpool and Aston Villa. We drew eight, so I think we drew too many. We drew too many. Those games against Manchester City, Leicester, Tottenham, Villa, Liverpool, Palace and Leeds. So we didn't beat Palace, we didn't beat Villa and we didn't beat Liverpool all season. If we beat just one one of those teams then possibly we would have been premier league champions in the europa league we got knocked out in the quarter final losing 3-2 to manchester united on aggregate in the emirates fa cup i mean let's not speak about that let's not speak about that and in the carabao cup we beat manchester united 2-1 so i would say we got some revenge but i think manchester united got their revenge we can look at the competitions or the game sorry and see how well we did in some of these games so manchester city we beat them 3-1 erdegaard scoring a hat trick we beat tottenham back to back at the emirates stadium getting a clean sheet scoring five in the two games combined one of course being carabao cup and one being a premier league we beat chelsea at the emirates stadium as well 3-2 that was fairly confident mason mount scored a very good goal but then alonso scored a set piece they didn't really threaten us all game Liverpool, we smashed them 6-0, but of course, that was in the Carabao Cup. Moving over to Chelsea in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal, we beat them 4-0, but then we went to Anfield, losing to a James Milner penalty in the 54th minute. We then beat Manchester United the very next game at the Emirates 2-1. Moving over to Old Trafford, we beat them 3-1 fairly comfortably. Lokonga scoring penalties, not sure what that's all about, but then we drew 0-0 against Liverpool at the Emirates. Emirates in the Carabao Cup final we of course beat Manchester United 2-1 and in a um, European quarter final first leg the Europa League of course that is we drew 1-1 at the Emirates but then we went to Old Trafford and lost 2-1 we beat Chelsea in the semi-final of the FA Cup and then we drew 2-2 at the Etihad now if Haaland didn't score that 82nd minute goal we would have been the Premier League champions and of course we lost 4-0 to Manchester United in the FA Cup final so looking at these stats in a little bit more detail you can see that arsenal scored 91 goals so we scored the most goals when looking at the conceded we conceded 35 goals looking at most possession as well arsenal coming in second place with 55 percent most shots for we come in fourth with 610 and for the fewest shots against we come in third with 348 top goal scorers jesus is there with 24 a smith a mill smith roll with 17 assists erdogan with 15 saka and Paqueta both on 10 looking at the most man of the match awards a mill smith roll on seven years just on six most key passes erdogan with 138 best pass completion nobody there but for the most tackles one tinny roll and tomiyasu clearly the fullbacks doing well in that area minus smith throw saka coming in fourth with the most dribbles made and looking at the fewest conceded ramsdale joint with hugo loris with 35 and lastly we can look at the squad stats see who were the top goal scorers in all of the competitions so yes this got 33 in 42 starts eddie and ketty are getting 21 in 20 starts smith roll with 19 and 44 martinelli with 18 and 29 pepe with 12 and 12 and erdegaard with 10 and 40 six now looking at the creative players Erdegaard with 24 assists smith roll with 21 fabio vieira saka both on 11 and lucas Paqueta on 10 unfortunately though that wraps up this video and don't forget this video is sponsored by manscape head over to the manscape website with the code rdf to get 20 percent off yes 20 percent off using the rdf code at manscape but also thank you guys for watching if you are liking this video or if you like this video make sure you are subscribed like the video but also leave a comment with a team you would like me to do this with next also shout out to my patrons i love you guys peace out stay tuned Bleep.